Are you eating? Bread. We were watching a... It's very dark. Why is it so dark? You know what? It's... It's dark just because it's dark. Jasper's now watching Despicable Me 1. The whole family was watching Despicable Me 3 a minute ago. We're having one of those pre-Christmas relaxes, hang out and eat popcorn and watch Despicable Me movies. Yes! But there was something I wanted to talk about today and I'm not quite sure how I'm going to do it. But basically, Hero 6 Black, fantastic camera. It does some pretty high frame rates at good resolution. So for example, 240 frames per second at 1080p. Brilliant for slow motion. One small problem, if you do that, it uses the H265 high compression codec, which Final Cut Pro did not support up until recently. And now it does. I've just installed the update, 10.4, and so I'm very keen to give this a go. I also want to have a go with the Fusion 360 degree camera, because similarly to this, in the past, I had to use Premiere Pro in order to edit the footage from that and stitch it together using the Fusion Studio app, and it was all just a big, great mess. And the new version of Final Cut also supports 360-degree videos, apparently. And then I'm going to talk a little bit about why I think mobile phones are quite a good analogy for electric vehicles sometimes but i suspect we're probably going to have dinner first and then we're going to get jasper to bed and so this is going to be one of those we'll do it later kind of things so yeah um with my lens cap see you it's like change of plan jasper's been put to bed now and what i'm going to do is actually have a sneaky run because Soph's due on the running machine in about an hour and that gives me plenty of time to do my daily dose of exercise as well. Have got to stick to the running, especially in winter time. Now, moving completely on from exercise for a minute. Thing about phones, right, and electric vehicles is that they're both technology items, which is not technically what people used to think of a car as, but the digital world and the internet and everything else has turned it into a technology product, whether car purists like it or not. So, a bit like a phone. Now, okay, there's a bit of a scale difference here, but this is where the similarity comes. Let's say for a second that this would be much easier if I had um, something that wasn't causing me to have a sore shoulder. Right. That'll do, but I'm a bit far away. Oh, goodness, nothing's easy, is it? Right, no, that's a dodgy camera angle. God, I need to lose weight. Hence the running. So, with a mobile phone, you've got a device which, in the past, had a certain use and a certain way of being used and you know that was it it had multiple days worth of battery life try selling a phone in 1998 you know 1999 that didn't have at least three days worth of battery life and it's exactly the same with electric vehicles five years ago was that sort of 99 98 period where everyone was just like you were never going to sell an electric vehicle with like 80 miles of range and and people didn't even appreciate the benefit that comes with a smartphone. Like, for example, I remember there was a Nokia I had that came with WAP, the WAP internet, and people sort of thought it might be quite nice, but as soon as you actually tried to use it, you quickly realized it was completely and utterly without purpose compared to an actual internet, you know, web browser. So, you know, that never really kind of took off. It impacted the battery life a lot. The phone was a lot more expensive. It just didn't kind of work. Smartphones didn't really work for the vast majority of people until the iPhone came along. And what the iPhone did was it made smartphones cool and it made people able to use them in such a way that they didn't mind the shortcomings. And, and then it just took off and it was a question of production. And it's exactly the same with electric vehicles. That's what I reckon. You've got that sort of stage where everyone's like, that range is never going to do. Then it's going to get to the point where people go, okay, the ranges are right. And then they're going to start to appreciate the feel, the driving feel, the low maintenance, the low fuel costs. 
you know, the environmental impact will probably be in there somewhere as well. The fact that the car design is much more fluid, there's likely to be far more variety in the way vehicles are designed if they're electric vehicles because the architecture is inherently more flexible. You don't have to have a gearbox and a clutch that takes up a certain amount of room right in the middle of the car and you, you see where I'm going with this, right? So electric vehicles are, are going to get that. Now that means we've got to the production bits and this is where phones and cars do differ. Because a phone is so much smaller, you can ramp the production substantially quicker and easier and you can cannibalize sources of lithium ion batteries from other places and draw those into your supply chain and just ship huge numbers of mobiles. And you can do that very quickly. With electric vehicles, however, you've got this issue whereby They've got such huge batteries in them that if you were to cannibalize other lithium ion battery products in order to put your battery together, there would be no other lithium ion battery products because all the batteries would go into your car and that wouldn't be to make an enormous number of cars, you know, comparatively, it'd be sort of 600,000, 700,000 vehicles, which is globally speaking, not a lot. So obviously, we need to build ahead of that production demand because the demand simply cannot be met through any source except having already built the production capacity. What I was also thinking about earlier when I was reading about VW and their plan to take an entire factory in Germany and just write, this is the EV producing factory, it'll be producing Volkswagen ID uh, cars from 2020, I think they said, and et cetera, et cetera. And that's fantastic. Very, very happy about all of that. But what it made me think is, it's gonna take them at least a year or so to retool and, and work that factory round and turn it into the EV specific production center they're looking for. And then, you know, they've got to make sure they've got the battery supply sorted out. So the suppliers are hopefully building extra battery factories. They probably are but that's out of VW's control to some extent. Then you compare that with Tesla. They have a great big factory that has gone from producing internal combustion engine vehicles into EVs. Admittedly, they didn't have to worry about getting rid of the internal combustion engine side of things, but they did have to worry about setting up the EV uh, production lines and they managed to do that you know, relatively successfully. And I, I hear that Model 3 production, for example, is ramping quite quickly now, so, Tesla's progress in the EV specific factory area, they're clearly at least a year or two ahead of where VW are. And now look at the battery side of things. They've got their Gigafactory in Reno, which by the look of it seems to be designed to just expand and expand and expand and expand for the foreseeable future. Ahead in the batteries, they're ahead in the EV production side of things, they're massively ahead in terms of EV experience. I would be terrified if I was the shareholder of another car manufacturer. And this is the really crucial bit here. It's a little bit like Samsung with their smartphones. It took a very long time for Android to build up from the fairly unusable initial smartphones that were basically just not Apple iPhones. That was their selling point, is that it was a smartphone that was sort of like an Apple iPhone, but not actually from Apple. And it took them, what, I think five years before they nailed the Android system down to the point where it was actually a usable smartphone with comparable features. That's the same process that's going to happen in the auto manufacturing business. You've got Tesla, which is like the Apple, and then you've got the Android phone manufacturers, and they are like VW, you know, the whole of the VW group, Mercedes-Benz, BMW, all these other EV manufacturers or soon to be EV manufacturers, Audi, of course, Jaguar, there's loads of them. And out of those, one or other manufacturer is going to build a coherent product that works well and sells well and gels with the customers and has the right infrastructure support or battery range or performance or whatever else they need to put in the magic source that brings it up to a comparable standard with what Tesla is doing. Anyway, we'll see lots of interesting things going to be happening over the next few years in the electric vehicle space. It's uh, one of the things that I find so interesting about doing this vlog actually is the fact that 
it is such a changing industry. And now I've just realized I've waffled on for nine and a half minutes. Ouch, that's gonna hurt me in editing. And I need to go this run. I'm gonna have some music so I don't die of boredom. Oh, also, before I forget, I'm gonna do hopefully a Geek Out EV episode today when I finish my run, obviously. It's gonna be about the new supercharger fair use policy, which, yeah. If you're interested in that, check it out on the Geek Out EV channel. Okay, that was hard work. 7.3 kilometers, 40 minutes. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Unfortunately, what I have not really done much of is, um, well, I've done no fusion, so we'll give that a go tomorrow, and, um, I've done very little on the um, super slow-mo, principally because it flickers like crazy, or it seems to, when you're under these LED lights, so. Come on. Jump down from there for me. Daylight's gone now, but it's okay, because tomorrow we'll make use of both those cameras and then we'll try out the new Final Cut Pro editing methodology. Um, hopefully it'll be nice and quick and easy. So I hope you've enjoyed today's vlog post. If you have, remember to like it and share it and subscribe if you haven't already and follow me on Instagram if you don't already and I'll see you tomorrow for the next instalment of my daily vlog. Bye. I'm done for the day. Oh, no I'm not. I did that geek out EV episode, wasn't I? Oh man, me and my big mouth. I could just cut that bit out and not do it today. Yeah. I better do it today. Either that or I'll have to do it tomorrow, which might be more sensible.